All right, guys, what's up? This is about finesse worms, how to rig them, what techniques to use, when to fish them, how to fish them, and all of that. Hey, Yagu, you ready to get into this video, buddy? We know it's too hot to be fishing, so we gotta be making some YouTube videos, right? All right, let's get it. All right, guys, I just wanna start off with what is finesse worm? Basically, it's just a little thin worm Right here, I'll give you an example. I like to use the zoom ones, they're pretty good. Um, so example is like this kind of worm. It's got a flat back and you can shaky head it, drop shot it, even Carolina rig it, wacky rig. You can do anything you want. That's why these are so great and versatile and they're so dangerous. So like, this is watermelon red and this is, oh no, that's, no, honestly, I'm not sure what this is. It's got, dark, look at this though, this is a four inch compared to a five inch. Now, this is watermelon red, and this is like green pumpkin red flake or something like that, I don't know. But uh, summertime, I like a darker color, for sure. That's, that's just me personally. Um, these right here, these aren't bad, but the chartreuse tips for dirty water. But okay, if your water is extremely clear, I recommend going something along the line of green. Anything that's green. Now, this is a curly tail. This is motor oil, kinda, that color. It's a pretty good color, um, but not really for my, this time of year, what I would pick. Now, here we're gonna get into our worm box. And so, for a drop shot technique is what we'll start off with, how to drop shot. So basically, boom. I like to go with, this time of year, a number two size hook. These are just eagle claw. You can see they're like, kind of like circle hooks, but they're not circle hooks. They're just, they're called drop shot hooks, basically. And then, if you're fishing rock, now hear me out, listen very clear. If you're fishing rock, throw a circle drop shot weight. Let me see if I can give you an example. Okay, so, right here. These, these are like the long cylinder ones, right? These are better for grass. Throw this in grass, throw this on rock. Grass, rock, remember that, okay? Now, the reason why is because these little like circle ones can get into the rocks better. And these go through grass better because they're like long and thin. Now, um, I'm gonna show y'all how to rig them on a drop shot. All right guys, we got some random worm brand. I don't know what brand this is. Uh, it's got a nice little tail that's like a diamond shape. It's green pumpkin on top, brown on the bottom. Absolute killer color for this time of year. Like, I mean, they munch it. Now, Robo Worm is by far my go-to color, no doubt about it. It's, or not color, brand, sorry, brand. So, just to get y'all started with the finesse worm side, how to rig it, this is a drop shot. Right here, oh shoot, come on, let me, uh, let me get myself together. Right here is the hook. You see how it's like perfectly sideways when I hold it up like that? That's how you want it. And then I got a, drop shot weight right there in the ball. And that's about a 15 inch gap. So I really wanna get that bait off the bottom, you know? So I have it paired up with a Guggen Squad Green Series finesse rod. This is a seven foot medium fast, perfect drop shot rod, perfect. I mean, it can't get better in my opinion. Um, got it paired up with a Shimano Sedona. 13 pound braid to a 10 pound uh, leader. I use, usually I run eight, but I'm running 10 cause I'm about to fish a tournament and you know, we're always gonna be fishing fast and trying to get no break offs for sure. So I want that 10 pound, but usually I go with eight or even six. All right, so right here, I'm doing a technique called nose ringing. And you take, this is the beginning of the worm, this is the end of the worm, the tail. You go through the head of the worm, the hook's gonna sit like this. So if simply, all you do is you nose hook it. Bam, just like that. And that worm's gonna sit like this in the water and that tail is just gonna flap up and down, just like that. Now, that's really good. That's a great way to do it. Now, I've also seen guys who, oh, and before I get anywhere, make sure you put it on straight. I did not put this on very straight because I'm not fishing right now, but I'm taking a video. But make sure you put it right in the middle. So I'll show you an example. Okay. Do you see how that goes in like right in the center? You always wanna do that every single time you're fishing a drop shot because no matter how pressured your body of water is, if you're fishing a drop shot as straight as can be, 
you will flat out get bites as long as you're fishing around fish course. Now, this is another way you can fish a drop shot. All you got, it's like, it's not Texas rigging because it's not exposed, but you, you kind of start like a Texas rig. You go down into the worm. All right, about a mm, quarter of an inch down, I don't know. You just poke it out and like that. And a lot of guys do it like this. And that makes it less, I guess, bulky looking, I don't know. I've never really fished it like this, but I've see, I have buddies who do do it like this and it, it works the same. Um, but I certainly like to go through just like a nose hooking, like I showed y'all before, where you go from the back of the worm and you come straight out, just like that. All right, now I will give y'all this rundown. If I'm fishing a pressured body of water, right? And you're not getting bites, it's really hard. Um, mix up your color and mix up the size. This is like a four inch finesse worm from Zoom. It's like that watermelon color, I'm not really exactly sure. And this is also a Zoom, but it's like a five inch, maybe six. And it's a darker green. Now, I'll always start out with a bigger size uh, worm. And just as like I showed you all there, I'll just nose hook it. And I'll start off with that longer worm. Now, if I'm not getting a uh, bit, then I mean, it's either one of two things. It usually isn't the size of the worm, but it's usually either the color or your spot. Now, if I'm not getting bit, I'll switch over to this uh, smaller one. Nose hook it like so. And I'll go fishing, I'll fish it. If I don't get bit, I move spots or I switch up techniques, which obviously we can't switch spots in this video because I'm not fishing, but I will show you what I can't switch is my technique. So next up is a shaky head. All right guys, this right here is a shaky head. The head, the uh, hook, and it sits like this, and you shake the head. That's why it's called a shaky head. Now, a finesse worm is one of the most dangerous worms you can put on a shaky head because it flat out gets bit. Here's how you rig it, right? You go through the head of the worm. You see that little twisty thing right there? You twist it on just like this. All right, just like that. And Twist it on like so. Now that wasn't perfect because I have a little bit of it poking out, but it honestly doesn't really matter. Um, so now you have it sitting like this, right? You just want to line it up on the side where you poke it in and simply where the hook shows it goes like it matches and lines up. You just simply slide it in just like that. And I like to just barely scrape my finger and barely be able to feel the hook. Now some guys just want it straight, like that's a straight worm, you can't feel the hook. But when I put pressure on it, bam, the hook comes down and look at that, there's your hook and it pops out. So that's a shaky head right there. And it'll sit in the water, Here, can y'all see this? Yeah, it'll sit in the water like this. And whenever you shake it, it'll, the worm will sit like this and you shake, pop, 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 and that worm just flutters down. And when I tell you guys this bait is as well dangerous, it's dangerous. But in my opinion, the drop shot's not getting bit. The next thing I go to, if it's slick, calm and sunny and the fish are very, very like on the bottom, shaky head, it's my second bait. Now this obviously is a video about finesse worms. So we're gonna keep it finesse worms. But I will tell you this, another great way to fish a finesse worm is not only on a drop shot or shaky head, but also on a Texas rig. Now, guys think of Texas rigs like you're throwing big magnum worms, right? Like 10 and a half inch worms. Now, that ain't the case, you don't have to do that. This, this hook obviously right here is a five eye. It's way too big for that. But you wanna fish with a, with a, let's say, let's say like a six inch or five inch worm, probably like six inch. You wanna fish probably like a two or three out hook. EWG, I don't like the worm hooks personally. It's just not just me, I like EWG. And you want to fish it with honestly whatever weight you want, depending on how far down you want to get it. Um, that's with a six inch. With a four inch worm, I want to go one out hook, small hook. Um, just something that's small because you don't want. You see how thick that wire is? That that's like a very thick hook. It has a lot of meat to it. You you don't want that much unless you're fishing a big worm like this because you're obviously going for some big old bass. I'm not saying you can't catch a big bass on this, but you don't have a lot of plastic to go through. 
So um, that's all you really need for that. All right, now the last thing that me personally, or I personally use for a finesse worm is when the Senko, like this Gary Yamamoto, is filled with too much salt and it sinks too fast when I'm flipping docks. I'll go to a finesse worm and either what people guys call wacky rig or Nico rig it, but this one's without a weight. You'll just go through the middle of the worm and I like to, uh, I like to hook it just like this, right through the middle of it. You see how that's rigged? And I like to skip it underneath the docks and let it just slowly fall. Make sure they're slacking your line, of course. Light line. But this is another thing a finesse worm's great with. Small hook, one out hook. This is the six cents drop shot hook. They're great. Shout out six cents, not sponsored or nothing like that. Maybe it could be. Let me look in if you're watching. Um, but these are great. I love the six cents products. Um, but yeah, that's really gonna do it for today's video. Oh, actually one thing, shaky head. If I'm fishing a shaky head, I know a lot of guys have different preferences on what rods they fish. Me personally on a shaky head, I fish a 7.2 medium heavy fast action rod. And that's because it has a little more backbone, but it still has a little bit of tip for forgiveness. But whenever you're fishing a shaky head, you know, the, the hook isn't exposed, right? You know, you just look at it and it's just like, well, you there's nothing really to like get caught on. So you really gotta, like set the hook really hard and get that hook to pop out the worm. So that is what I fish with a shaky head. A wacky rig, I throw a 610 medium. It's a little smaller than seven foot so I can skip it better underneath the docks and it's still got a little bit of backbone but a lot of forgiveness. Um, all those eight to 10 pound lines, shaky head sometimes 12, depending on the size of fish I'm, I'm targeting. All right guys, here's how you fish a drop shot for example. So you make your cast, bam, in the water, let it sink to the very bottom. All right, now you just want a little bit of slack in your line. Like, I mean the most little, where your line, instead of going straight down to the water like that, you want it to be like this into the water. All right, when you're fishing like that, you really just wanna barely just twitch it with your rod, like maybe one or two times. What that does is it makes the worm go like up and down like this. Now, think twitch the worm, not twitch the bait. Now. Another example is twitch the worm, not the weight. Think about twitching it so lightly, only the worm is twitching and that the weight on the bottom is not moving at all. Now you do that a couple times, you sit, let it pause, you know, reel it in a little bit, let it hit the bottom. Same thing over and over, keep casting. If you're not getting bit, then you throw a shaky head out there. Throw your shaky head on the bottom. Now you can fish this one of two ways. You could really like give it some good shakes. Or what I do a lot is I don't even shake it even though it's a shaky head. I just kind of drag it a little bit. Now if there's a bunch of rocks, you gotta shake it and get it up over the rocks a little bit. But I like to just kind of drag the shaky head. I don't know, something about it, I just, I, it gets a bit better when I do that. I just drag it very so subtly. Now, a wacky worm, you skip it into that dock. I don't really fish in open water, think of it. You see the fish, you don't even, I mean, you don't see the fish. You skip underneath the dock and you just wait. Let slack completely in your line. You lift up a little bit and you usually will see your line, um, your, um, line running left or right. They don't usually sit there and eat it. You watch your line going and all you gotta do is lean into it sideways because usually you're fishing a circle hook or something like that or a drop shot hook. You just lean into it and start reeling in and let your drag do the work. With a shaky head, you feel that bite, right? and you're watching your line barely move off, reel down, and you set it as hard as you can at that three quarter slot is what I could do. Kind of, so this is 12 o'clock, three o'clock, and then six, whatever that is. I have to go in between 12 and three, so this way. You go, bam, with a little slack in your line. Like, have you ever heard of slack line hook sets? With like a jig, not so much with this because it's a lighter finesse technique, but a little slack and then bam, you set it. Now, with a drop shot, which is on this rod, I told you how to work it, now you get the bite, right? You feel it, you're like, okay. You, you see it, and you start letting the fish get tight with your rod, and you're gonna see your rod tip start bending a little bit, and what I do is I just start reeling into them. That's all I do. I start reeling in and lift up. I don't set it and then reel in. 
I see the fish, I start reeling, reeling, and then bam, I lift up with them. Because you're exposed hook and you just want to just gently get them up. Because you'll get them. With the drop shot, you're fishing very finesse lines. So you don't want to have any break offs. And they always, they honestly, if you let them carry it off, just like, and they're trying to fight for it, if you just hold your rod like this and you start reeling in, whenever they're on, you'll catch a fish. You won't have to set the hook. That's how much the, the drop shot does damage. They get hooked. But also, you will lose a bunch of drop shots if you're fishing it um, with that nose hook. But it has the most action. So, I mean, you'll lose some fish. I mean, you won't lose fish. You'll lose some lures, but you'll catch a lot more fish with that nose hook. All right. If y'all like, if y'all enjoyed that, like, subscribe, and make sure you subscribe, please, guys. Please subscribe because I want y'all to see this next tournament video. We're doing a tournament every month under Youth Fishing Federation, and they're really good. They'll be really fun. Top three pays out. First is a thousand. Second is like eight hundred. I'm not sure. Uh, third's three hundred, and big bass is a hundred. There's two teams. Uh, a team has two people, and I don't know how many teams there are. There's a high school division, which I'm fishing in, and there's a youth, uh, younger division, a junior. But once again, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments what y'all go to finesse form brand is and color, and what y'all mainly fish it with. But yeah, just remember, guys, shaky head, drop shot, and wacky rim. It's all you need for this time of year on summer finesse form. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.